Tanel Verema from the Estonian Open Air Museum and Doug Maringi, his colleague, will join him. Uh, and uh, uh, he's been working from 1998 at the Open Air Museum in Estonia and then worked as a museum uh, uh, educator. Before that, as a volunteer, he has uh, been in charge of three museums, a children's museum, which belongs to the Tallinn City Museum, the Estonian Theater and Music Museum since 2019, and the Estonian Open Air Museum. He's a board member of the Estonian Museum Association. And Doug Maringi will join him later, who has uh, worked th since 2006 in the Open Air Museum. Uh, she's the director of uh, Rural Architecture Department there and uh, responsible for education, research, and rural uh, construction and architecture. She's a board member. Um, uh, of the Estonian culture, from the now an Estonian, I also welcome our guests. Mulon Sur, O Kutsuda, Lavale Meja Pochina, Brit Esti Vapa, Ohi Museumit, Dagmaringi, Tanel Verema. Palun. Thank you. I can say only part. Um, thank you. And gentlemen, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to participate in today's conference. And of course, we wish the Latvian Ethnographic Open Air Museum good luck on such an important anniversary. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot attend the evening reception. We have to get back to Estonia today, uh, but we hope your celebrations will be great. And uh, now, uh, my colleague and I will give a brief overview of the present and future of the Estonian Open Air Museum. Uh, during my presentation, there will be a lot of numbers, and of course, you don't have to memorize all of them, but hopefully they will give you an overview of the current situation at our museum, and you can compare them with your own museums. Uh, first, I'd uh, like to say that Estonia is a small country and uh, we have only 1.3 million inhabitants and somewhere half of a million live in Tallinn. But now about the Estonian Open Air Museum. Estonian Open Air Museum operates as a foundation since uh, 2014. It means uh, now already 10 years. Actually, our museum is 67 years old and it was founded in 1957 and opened to the visitors in 1964, uh, many years later than the Latvian Open Air Museum. It is located in Tallinn, uh, in the district of Rokalmare, at 15 minute drive from the city centre. The museum territory covers 72 hectares, and the museum exhibition holds 80 exhibits. Uh, from the 18th to the 21st century. The display includes 15 farm dwellings, an apartment building, a schoolhouse, a village shop, a little chapel, a tavern, a fire station, a water mill, and several windmills. Our museum is open all year round. During the summer season, it's open seven day, uh, days a week, but during the winter season, it is closed on Mondays, as it is now. Nine buildings are open to visitors all year round, including the tavern and the village shop. What's the situation with the construction of new exhibit buildings? In the last five years, we have set up three new buildings and they all are quite different. There is modern prefabricated wooden house. We opened that 2019. This is the left one. Uh, Kolhoz apartment building. We opened that 2021. And combined barn and storage building on Kolka farm. We opened that last year, 2023. And this uh, last one is a replica building 
the original house was set on fire and burned down in uh, 1987. Uh, during this period, exactly before the uh, Soviet Union collapsed, many buildings set on fire and burned down in Estonian Open Air Museum. At the moment, the exposition on Kolka Farm is so new that we don't know yet exactly how many uh, visitors it brings to us. But we know that the Kolhoz apartment building, uh, which one has been open three years, we can say that it has had a very strong and positive impact uh, on our visitor numbers. And i tell you a little bit about our visitors. In 2019, 140,000 visitors visited the Estonian Open Air Museum, and it was last good year for us. As you all remember, the coronavirus pandemic started in 2020, and uh, that year our visitor numbers dropped to 55,000. It was uh, almost one-third what we had the uh, year before. We hoped that the number of visits would recover in 2022, but then the war in Ukraine started. Last year, 110,000 visitors visited the Estonian Open Air Museum, and it was uh, 30,000 people less than uh, 2019. The biggest influence uh, on our visitor numbers is the lack of foreign tourism, especially tourists from cruise ships, since cruise ships cannot visit St. Petersburg anymore, there are not as many trips to Estonia as well. In 2019, 50% of our visitors were foreign tourists. In 2023, only 27% of our visitors came from outside Estonia. This means that only 50% of tourists have returned. How does this situation affect our uh, budget? Our budget can be broadly divided into two. Uh, two thirds of it is received as operating support from the state. And one third of the budget has to be earned by ourselves. It means somewhere 1.7 million we have to earn. As you could see by the visitor numbers, we have not yet reached the previous level. At the moment, we are not able to earn that much, and we have to use the previous budget balance to cover the expenses. Since foreign tourism will probably not recover as it was before the coronavirus pandemic, we have to think a lot about how to manage in the future. Despite the current situation, we are not at all pessimistic, but we try to find ways to improve the condition this was brief overview uh, today's situation of our museum, and now I will uh, hand the floor over to my good colleague Dagmar Ingi, uh, who will speak about museum content development in present and in future. So, thank you, Tanel. And as Daniel mentioned, in the next 10 or 12 minutes, I'll introduce you a bit latest project and activities that are going in the Open Air Museum. But before that, I would like to give you a short overview about our museum's main focuses and working principles through history to just give us a little context. So when the Estonian Open Air Museum was established in 1957, its primary purpose was to study, collect and exhibit typical examples of rural architecture. So it was based on a principle that objects should not be used for active presentations or workshops, etc. And also it wasn't important to research the stories of the people whom those houses had belonged. Uh, from the 1990s, when uh, on the European museum field already 20 years, uh, the importance of study, education and also enjoyment had been in focus, also Estonian Open Air Museum um, uh, started to change the concept of the museum. Uh, it became more important to tell stories in an attractive way to help people to understand our history and give context to our collections. 
So our museum was the first in Estonia which started to offer educational programs and also public events based on a living history method. As in last uh, almost uh, 35 years, the role of the museum has changed a lot and uh, also our main focuses and way of working at our museum is, uh, has been completely changed. Uh, so as we all know, new museum definition claims that museums are open to public, uh, are accessible and inclusive, foster diversity and sustainability. They work with communities and offer, in addition to before mentioned education and enjoyment, also reflection and knowledge sharing. And uh, although this uh, definition was approved just last year, our museum work uh, has based on these values almost uh, 10 years. Uh, in 2015, uh, Estonian Open Air Museum founded with opening of Old Believers House and set to farm our center of multicultural Estonia. Uh, main idea of the center was to offer place and, and possibilities for uh, different minor communities to get together and introduce their culture to their younger generations and to other nationalities. So museums started to organize folk calendar events to introduce different cultures and also exhibitions made by uh, or in cooperation with, with these communities. Uh, in uh, 2020, uh, we started to offer integration pro programs for adults and school children to help them to better understand the local culture and give possibilities to compare Estonian culture and history with their own roots. The other important topic uh, our museum started to work uh, on in 2018 uh, was how to exhibit difficult history. Until uh, 2021, our exposition introduced rural architecture and everyday life from the 18th century till the 1939. So in uh, 2018, we decided to make a change. So we decided to relocate the Kolkhoz apartment house from South Estonia to the museum and exhibit it in our uh, village environment. This project gained a lot of public attention. Uh, there were discussions whether a museum should ruin its lovely village environment with this ugly brick house built in the 1960s, and whether the museum at all should speak about this contested history. But despite these contradictory opinions, we, we decided to carry on the project, and uh, now I can say it was a really wise decision. Uh, the Kohos apartment house, uh, which uh, introduces every day life from the 1960s, 70s, 90s, and 2019, has been probably our museum's most popular object through history. Uh, as we started to speak about the need for exhibiting this building and everyday life related to it already from the beginning of the process on TV, in daily newspapers, in our social media channels, people already expected it. We had collecting campaigns, we organized thematic events uh, for everyone, as excursions to the former Golkhoz centers uh, or even 70s disco parties. So uh, many people wanted to contribute their stories or items to putting together this uh, interesting exposition. Uh, also, the process of relocating was remarkable, as this was the first uh, brick building in Estonia which was relocated from one place to another using an innovative method. So when uh, the house was officially opened in 2021, as Antanel already mentioned, it was often overcrowded and uh, people even, even, even waited in queues to get in. Uh, the reason for it wasn't only the attention we got from the media, but, uh, but the possibility to experience very living uh, environments from our visitors' childhood and youth. Uh, it was the joy of recognition, or as we said, this reflecting. So today uh, we don't hear anymore uh, that this house should not have been brought to the museum, but uh, most of our visitors uh, recognize us uh, for this emotional exposition. Uh, we can say that uh, Kolkhoz House also gave uh, us a, well, a base to uh, work towards a more inclusive and accessible museum. Uh, 
So we started to offer welfare programs for elderly people at the museum to revive their memories using environments from recent history and, and offer possibilities to get out of their homes and, and communicate. Our uh, most recent development, uh, which we started to work on in 2021, uh, unites three important topics. Uh, it's environmental awareness, it's sustainability and children's welfare. A uh, development called Farm Geats World contains two parts, uh, Farm Geats Adventure Trail, which will be opened in 2024 in May, and Kolka Living Farm, uh, with, with working cattle shed and, sh and hands-on exposition, every small step counts, which was partly opened in October 2023 and will be open totally uh, in, uh, in spring. So the idea of the project is to bring geats out of the virtual world, to make them move, uh, experience and learn at the same time. Uh, this playful adventure trail leads families through our exposition and nature areas, forest, meadows, seaside, offers possibilities for climbing, swinging, jumping, exploring nature, getting to know wild animals, berries, trees, birds, introducing Estonian folk religion, and heard boys everyday life's joys, threats, obligation, and fears, and yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, tries to compare with, with nowadays. Uh, Kolka Living Farm gives opportunity to experience everyday life in the old farm. Simple things, kids can try different jobs, how to milk a cow, how to put a horse in front of the carriage, how to cook or make woodwork, how to salt or dry fish and sort vegetables. So simple things, but forgotten. Uh, exhibition uh, Every Small Step Counts, which was uh, opened a couple months ago, explains uh, through 19th century farm life how to live more sustainably, how to spare food and reuse different items, how to produce less garbage, how to sort it, how to live healthier, what kind of little steps we can do to help to save the world. And everything is uh, made by, by hands-on method. Uh, replica Cattle Shed uh, where different domestic animals like sheep, goats, geese, hens, rabbits and turkeys are living uh, is a very calm and, and stress-free zone, not only for geese, but also for their parents. Uh, this part of the exposition helps to grow empathy and teaches how to take care of, uh, of animals. This is the place where children learn how to consider others. So we really hope and believe that this development project has uh, many advantages. Uh, it will increase our visitor numbers and family tourism. It adds new uh, interesting topics to our exposition, but at the same time, it uh, raises awareness of sustainability, offers educational and fun environment to support kids and, uh, and also their families, mental health and, and welfare. Uh, but even if the last described project isn't ready yet, uh, we are already having new dreams. We don't know when they will be fulfilled, but uh, we are dreaming. So uh, we have a dream to restore our uh, in situ object, Baltic German summer, uh, summer main or Rockal Mare, and speak about the relations between pheasants and, and uh, landlords, open uh, maybe a new topic, uh, colonialism. We have a dream to bring Soviet summer cottage to the museum to show townspeople's desire and, and need to get uh, to the countryside, out of the cities, even nowadays. We have a dream to speak more about vacation and leisure culture at the countryside from the 19th century to, to nowadays. But before these dreams will be fulfilled, you are very welcome to visit us at the Estonian Open Air Museum as it is today. And last, not least, greetings from all colleagues to Latvian Open Air Museum for this very important birthday. <laughs> Thank you. This very wonderful insight into the work of Estonian Open Air Museum, and I can say by my own personal experience that really the Kolhos House brings back memories and it's really worth going to. But why Sheit Muzalek, Adam? Do we have any questions? Uh, you're welcome to ask them. We have two microphones on each side 
uh, of the room, and you may also ask questions via our Facebook uh, page or via YouTube. Um, I would like to ask, um, does um, uh, more visitors coming to your museum uh, to thanks by your uh, new, like, uh, uh, more friendly for the kids and uh, more, uh, more, I don't know, it's like a free time, uh, more measures, yeah, it's, uh, does it make in more uh, visitors and uh, what is uh, like the new tendencies in the last uh, 10, 15 years? Um, it's difficult to say uh, because this uh, last project I was introduced, I, I was introducing this, uh, which is concretely made for families and for kids. Uh, it's really new. Uh, we opened a small uh, part of it in 2023 uh, in October. So it's uh, it's uh, a bit early to say uh, if it uh, if it uh, means more visitors. But yes, it was our goal. Uh, you said uh, something about this entertainment. <laughs> so uh, the, uh, all this concept is uh, very much based on uh, on uh, also scientific research. So so we don't just uh, 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 show kids uh, how it it is fun, but we show it uh, through history. So we try to make like a bridge uh, between different generations. So I don't know if I <laughs> yeah, if I answered uh, to your question. Mm -hmm. I would have the following question. You also have four-legged staff in the museum. Could you briefly sketch the advantages and the drawbacks of having these animals in your museum? Like friends by you and the museum. So, what is your experience so far, and what are your gains from this uh, accomplishment? Uh, yeah, I think that uh, there are very many uh, open air museums where, uh, where animals are kept. Uh, we have uh, kept animals already. I think 15 or even more years, uh, but uh, we, uh, it was problematic because we didn't have any proper room for them. Uh, but now, if we, as we have um, uh, restored this, uh, this uh, farm, uh, which Tanan showed us, this replica farm, it gave us the possibility to, uh, to show the animals. And I think that uh, nowadays, when in the cities, kids haven't seen uh, any uh, animals at all, they come to mu the museum, they, uh, they see uh, uh, smaller uh, sheep and bigger sheep, and they uh, say that the smaller are sheep and the bigger are goats. So I think it's uh, actually really important to show these topics. And uh, again, we, d we don't just show animals, but uh, we have, uh, as we have with the gardening, uh, we have also um, the goal uh, to uh, introduce uh, old species. So uh, we just don't uh, take any animals but Estonian uh, I can say country, country uh, sheep, and then well, the, the old species. We tried to show them. Uh, well, that's your times. Do we have any additional questions? Oops. I have a question. Well, you have an attractive way of presenting topics in your museum, and yet doesn't that also require additional costs, additional funding? How do you uh, mobilize that funding from internal resources or, or where from? and, and uh, are there any topics that you're trying to avoid? Specific time periods that your museum is uh, 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 depicting or, uh, or not, maybe not, like what are the time periods? Can you explain it? Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Well, it is. Muse. I will say again. Museums are uh, shows or exhibitions of history attracting large numbers of visitors and they also generate income and visitors. Uh, do you, are you capable of coping with your own internal income or do you need any financial support from the outside. I'm also like living, uh, living pictures, let's say, events different, and uh, for these events, do you have more or less uh, go uh, realizing if you're uh, doing your own funds or getting so many funds from outside? If I understood, uh, this question was about living history. We, yeah, we have done living history uh, almost uh, 25 years from now, 90s. Uh, from 90s, and, uh, and we always get some uh, extra money from outside, and we have different projects, but uh, uh, always question about living history, it's always connected with uh, national holidays, and the uh, problem with uh, all open-air museums always is... Uh, weather that uh, <clears throat> our most expensive and, and biggest uh, national holiday is uh, Midsummer Eve and if uh, the e weather is good then uh, we have a lot of people and uh, if not then, then uh, uh, we, let's say we try to survive. Uh, I'm not sure if I understood exactly the question but Thank you, Aita, Dagmaria, Tanel, and uh, fair for you. Thank you. Interesting introduction. Thank you.